Yeah. Are you just Bank of America? Yeah, it's my favorite bank. Oh, nice. How do you know your uh, login is secure? What are you doing there? I'm on Amazon. I'm looking to buy a trampoline for the kids. Oh, so how do you know your payment with Amazon is secure? Hey, who, who are we talking to? Oh, yeah, I'm just on a Skype call with my dad. Cool. How do you know uh, someone is not listening into your conversation? Hey, who are you writing to? I'm writing an email to my favorite mathematician, Leonard Euler. So how do you know your email can get their security? Wait, isn't he dead? Well, actually, he did pass away in 1783, but he lived a prominent life beforehand. He had lots of accomplishments. He was born in 1707 in Basel, Switzerland. He then only first began to study mathematics as a child when he went to study with the famous Johann Bernoulli of the many things named after him. Uh, in Basel, where he studied with Bernoulli, ba Bernoulli would give Euler guidance. In 1722, Euler graduated from the University of Basel, which, if you can do a little bit of math, that makes Euler graduating from college at only 15 years old. Nothing too impressive. Then on, he went to go study at St. Petersburg Academy in St. Petersburg in 1727, and he would serve the monarchs and the prominent people of Russia, and he got a little fed up with that, and then went to Germany and studied at the Berlin Academy, which was run by Frederick the Great, and after his time there, he was spent a little time in St. Petersburg, where he eventually passed away. So yes, you are right, he is, he is dead, but he had a lot of things that he accomplished in his life. He was actually a married man, a man that also couldn't see, which is very surprising for someone that has to write to do mathematics. He lived with his wife, Katharina, and they had 13 children. Unfortunately, due to child mortality rates back then, only five made it to adulthood. But like I mentioned, he had lost one eye and was blind in his 40s and then a little bit later in life went completely blind but he was still able to continue studying mathematics due to his remarkable memory. Some say that Euler is like the Beethoven of mathematics where Beethoven couldn't hear the music he produced but whereas Euler could not see the mathematics he produced and Surprisingly, when he was blind in 1775, he produced a paper a week, which is a remarkable rate for a blind man, especially when you can't see, and it's very helpful to write if you can see. Among some of these papers, however, is are, there are applications to modern day life, like sending a secure email or sending a secure message online or a payment. And now we will examine what underlies the RSA encryption. In the dawn of cybersecurity, the first method used for encryption was the symmetric key algorithm. This method works as follows. Say there are two parties, A and B, that want to exchange confidential information. They keep this information a secret by encrypting it with a secret key that most both parties must know before they begin communicating. This method has multiple flaws. For one, they have to establish a secret key that they both already know. This is extremely difficult to do unless there is direct contact between the two parties. Also, if one party, let's call him Mr. X, needs to communicate with many clients, he would require a separate key for each client, which can be difficult to keep track of. For these reasons, the symmetric key algorithm has re been replaced in modern cybersecurity by a more efficient and effective algorithm called the RSA encryption algorithm. To explain how this system works, we will use an example where two parties, Mr. X and Dr. Y, are trying to exchange a secret message, while another party, we'll call them Ms. Z, is trying to look in. We need to find a solution where Mr. X and Dr. Y are not required to interact directly before they can communicate securely. This can be done using an algorithm first published by Whitfield, Diffie, 
and Martin Hellman in 1976 called the Diffie-Hellman Key Exchange. Whereas the symmetric algorithm only utilizes one secret key, the Diffie-Hellman Key Exchange utilizes three. Mr. X and Dr. Y each have their own keys that are completely private. Mr. X doesn't know what Dr. Y's key holds, and Dr. Y doesn't know what Mr. X keys hold. At least not yet. Then there is also a public key. This public key is viewable by anyone. So in order for this encryption to work, there needs to be a method for Mr. X and Dr. Y to find the value held by each other's keys so they can exchange information securely. This is done using something called a one-way function. A one-way function is a function that can easily be formed in one direction, but is difficult to do in reverse. A very simple, simple example of this concept uses different paint colors. It is easy to mix two col colors of paint to make one new color, but if you are only given that new paint color with no other information, it's almost impossible to derive the two original colors. We can actually extend this example of paint mixing to understand the basic concept behind the Diffie-Hellman equation. Say Mr. X has their own private color blue that neither Dr. Y nor Miss Z know, and Dr. Y has their own private color red that neither Mr. X nor Ms. Z know either. Then there is a public color G, which is vi visible to all three of them. Mr. X mixes their blue with the public color green and sends it to Dr. Y. Dr. Y takes their private color red with the public color G and sends that mixture to Mr. X. Then Mr. X mixes his private blue with Dr. Y's color mixture, and Dr. Y mixes their color red with Mr. X's color mixture. And this is the solution. They will both end up with the same color mixture if they complete this process. Both X and Y know the key color, but it is very difficult for Miss Z to figure it out without knowing the two private colors. Of course, computers can't encrypt messages using paint mixtures because that would be pretty tough on their hardware. So we need to create an equation that applies the same logic as our paint solution to the mathematical processes. A common one-way problem that is the basis of the Diffie-Hellman equation as well as RSA encryption is called the discrete logarithm problem. In this problem, you take two relatively prime integers, m and n, that are co-prime with a random integer a m to the a mod n is easy to calculate, um, but if you are given the solution x, the only viable approach to find a is by guess and check. Now a computer can solve this with small integers relatively quickly, but as the values grow larger and larger for m and n, it becomes prohibitively difficult for even an extremely powerful processing unit. So now that we have our one-way equation, let's apply it to the same process we used with the paint mixtures. Mr. X and Dr. Y will publicly agree on a prime modulus, M, and a generator, N, that are relatively prime to each other. In this example, we will use 11 and 3. Then, X and Y will each choose a positive integer that only they know. Here, X chooses 8 and Y chooses 4. X calculates 3 to the 8th mod 11 and sends that value 5 to Y. Then Y calculates 3 to the 4th mod 11 and sends their value over to X. Now here's the solution. X takes the value 4 sent to them by Y and raises it to the power of 8 mod 11, which results in 9. Then y takes their value 5 and raises it to their private number 4 mod 11 and gets that same value 9. Here 9 is the private value that the, they can use to conduct secret uh, communications. This is because uh, without these two private numbers or one of the two private numbers it is extremely difficult for Ms. Z to figure out uh, what the key is. But that doesn't show why X and Y got the same result, uh, 9. 
To show this, uh, we need to break the problem apart. So each equation for x, it, they used 5 to the 5, which would result from y, to the 4th mod 11. And y used 4, which was the result from x, to the 8th mod 11. If we break these down into the calculations that x and y did on their own, you get 3 to the 8th mod 11 to the 4th mod 11 equals 3 to the 4th mod 11 to the 8th mod 11. Uh, using uh, properties of modulo, uh, this eventually ends up being 3 to the 8 times 4 mod 11 mod 11 times, which is equal to 3 to the 8 times 4 mod 11 mod 11, which shows why uh, x and y both got the same result as the private key. So among many of Euler's studies, he was very interested in prime numbers, especially studying the distribution of prime numbers which is defined by the phi, ser phi function. Phi function is known also as the Euler total function. For any for a positive integer n, Euler's total function of n is defined as the amount of the positive integers which is smaller than n and also re relatively prime, prime to n. For example, phi a is equal to <coughs> 4 because only 1, 3, 5, and 7 is relatively prime to 8. So we count the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. So the answer equals to 4. Notice there is an interesting fact of flag function. Is flag function of any prime number p greater than 1 is p minus 1. Here's the reason why. Prime number p greater than 1 will only share the factor with itself. For example, if we calculate phi uh, 7, since 7 is a prime number, we will find none of the numbers share a factor with 7 except 7 itself. So we cross the 7 out. And the answer will be 7 minus 1, which is 6. So. Let's take a look at the three most important equations that we use to generate the public key and the private key in RSA. So the first equation is the pi function. Secondly, we know that Euler's theorem gives us this equation. This equation tells us if n, if a and n are relative are relatively prime, a to the power of pi n divided by n will give us the remainder as 1. And we have the third equation. This formula we can find b, such that b minus 1 can be divided by n. We call b the modular multiplicative inverse. When you visit a website beginning with https backslash backslash it is highly likely that your web browser is using rsa to validate the certificate for the remote server which you have connected to once your browser validates the certificate change as discussed previously it will probably use rsa to perform a secure key exchange with the server the end result is your browser can communicate securely with the remote server and provide you with confidence that the remote server in question is indeed the server you intend to contact. Not a bad guy executing a man-in-the-middle attack to steal all your private information. Security is a luxury that most people take for granted. Hopefully, throughout this video, you've gained an appreciation for Euler's mathematics and his contributions which impact everyday modern life.